Hello, Floss Tube. My name is Olivia. My channel is Long Live the Stitcher. I am a cross stitcher. I am cross stitch obsessed. And my channel is all about cross stitch, my projects that I'm working on, and how cross stitch has been a source of peace and a tool to help me manage stress and anxiety. So this is an unconventional floss tube video. Instead of showing you my projects or things that I've purchased or all the other things you can see in those other videos, I'm gonna talk through my top five tips for traveling with cross stitch. I'm calling it travel tips for cross stitch. I'm gonna walk through some of the things that I've learned through traveling with cross stitch projects and sometimes making a mess and sometimes getting it right. And we'll share with you some of the things that I think really help organize and make traveling with a cross stitch project and stitching on it while you're traveling a joy. The first tip, tip number one, is to consider your mode of travel. Are you going to be traveling by car? If you are, you're the one driving. If you're driving, don't be stitching. But if you're not driving, are you going to be sitting in the back seat, the front seat? Are you going to be in a plane? Are you gonna be traveling by train? Are you gonna be in a mode of travel that has a lot of movement to it? So a car, there's some movement, right? Things are moving around. If you're doing something like stitching where you've got a needle going into a very specific hole in your fabric that has a lot of some movement to it. Um, trains kind of the same way, but a little less. There's a little bit of rocking back and forth on a train. Airplanes, less movement. Think about the space that you're gonna be walking into. You're gonna be stitching in while you're traveling. Are you going to be in a very confined space? Think middle seat on an airplane. Or you're gonna have a whole bunch of elbow room, like let's say first class ticket on a train in the UK. Lots of room. Are you gonna have a table? in front of you to stitch on, like on a train or on an airplane with the table that comes down? Or are you gonna be in a car where you don't have that kind of space that you can put, put things on a table? So that really is the thing. Think about the space that you're gonna be stitching in as you travel. And then you can, that information can help, dis, uh, help inform the choices that you make further down the line. So let's talk about what some of those choices are. Number two, you need portability and flexibility. And I'm talking about your project bag. So I use just generally these very um, flexible and durable, and let's just say it cheap bags from Amazon. Um, I think I got a pack of 10, you know, probably 15 bags for under $20. Extremely affordable. They're also very durable, right? So this is plastic, you can probably hear that. Um, things don't fall of it. They zip up right easily across the top. But here's the thing I love most about these bags when we're talking about traveling with cross stitch. They're foldable. Look how just like we can roll this whole puppy right up and stick it in a bag, stick it in maybe a side pocket of a suitcase, something that I might have easier access to to pull out. I can fold it up, I can put it in a space like the um, back pocket, the seat pocket on an airplane to stick it right there from when I'm ready to pull out, pull it out. Yeah, so a foldable, moldable bag is really important. And I would recommend that be a bag that you're not terribly attached to in the event that it gets something spilled on it, in the event that it's, you know, has a little bit of extra wear and tear. Some of the project bags that you see out there on floss tube or in the stitching community in general are just gorgeous. They are works of art. They have quilting, they have fabric choices that are bespoke and beautiful. Uh, I wouldn't take one of those traveling. <laughs> I wouldn't take one to the beach. I wouldn't take one to an airport. I wouldn't take one traveling. I would take my dollar Amazon bag traveling. So a small, foldable, not work of art project bag, I think is an important piece. So that's tip number two. Tip number three is to pick your pattern. You're not gonna take any pattern with you on a cross stitch or on a travel. You're going to take something that is small, I would recommend something small, something that is simple, and something that is uh, fun, right? So those are, those are the three things. The first thing, it needs to be small. 
You don't want to have something that is has a massive fabric that it works on. Then you're carrying around that fabric, you're dealing with that fabric. I would recommend something that fits squarely inside of the hoop or the Q-snap or maybe if you stitch in hand, um, something easy along those lines. So something that is small, manageable. Those are easier things to stitch on when you're traveling. Two, it should be a simple pattern. You guys know I love my Lady and the Unicorn, my Scarlet Quince Tapestry. It's got over a hundred different colors. Most of those are actually blended threads that go into it. It is a complicated stitch, a complicated stitch. It has no place for traveling. <laughs> she sits at home. <laughs> Take something that is single colors, that are bright and vibrant colors. Those are easier to work with, in my opinion. Um, something that's very easy to pull from. And I would recommend something that has lots of colors that you can change out, you know? If you're all stitching just one color, if you're taking a monochromatic stitch, there's a joy in that, but you're only working with the one and that might become something that becomes monotonous to you. Um, so I would recommend something that is simple, that has lots of colors and is small. So that's tip number three, pick your pattern. Oh, something to think about when you're picking your pattern is what fabric goes with that pattern. If you're going to be stitching in a space that has a lot of movement, like a car, like a train, of course, boats, even more movement, you'll want something that is a little more forgiving with your movement. If you're stitching with something, let's say, you're moving around a little bit with the mode of travel that you're moving with, Having a fabric that helps guide your needle to the correct hole is going to be more forgiving, more easier to work with. You'll see more progress, less, ah, shoot, that's the wrong hole. Bottom line, Ada. Ada is a much better fabric for those moments, those moving around, than something like an even weave or a linen where you're literally skipping over in most, most times, skipping over one of the fabric threads. I highly recommend Ada if it is a stiff, Ada, even better. It's going to help guide you where you need to go. There's less room for possible mistakes. Highly recommend. Number four, pick your supplies. So your cross-stitch supplies when you travel are most likely going to be different than those supplies that you have when you're working at home. Let me show you the ones that I use, my favorites. First things first, we all have them. Oop. Nail clippers. Don't take scissors, especially if you're traveling in a mode of transportation that has security screenings ahead of time in the United States here, that's TSA for our airports. Um, I have lost one of my uh, scissors. A lot of stitchers who travel with their stitching will tell you that they've had TSA throwaway scissors. Um, though, even those scissors that follow the guidelines, so the guidelines is, are on the TSA that the blade length has to be less than three inches. That's a pretty hefty blade length. Like three inches is, is a decent amount of length. Well, the, I have had scissors that complied with that be thrown away. I've also been the person standing there risking it all by arguing with the TSA that the scissors that I had in my kit were compliant and should not be thrown away. That's not a good place to be. Um, generally arguing with law enforcement is not where you wanna go. <laughs> so I recommend circumnavigating that entire problem and not bringing scissors. Bring something that's always compliant and there's nail clippers. I bought a brand new set when I went traveling the last time I took a big cross stitch travel so that they were very sharp. They were brand new, also had not been used on nails because gross. And put those inside my kit. TSA didn't even look twice at these. Um, excellent, good use. The next piece of uh, your equipment I highly recommend if you don't typically, a light. So I took this little book light that I've had for an eon um, and I put it in my cross stitch bag and was able to, if I was in a space that didn't have very good lighting, I just pop that sucker on top of my um, hoop. Or when I was in a plane, I was able to finagle it on top of part of the um, table on the in front of me just clipped it right on like that see and have good lighting no matter where I was so I highly recommend um, especially for plane travel get yourself one of these little itty bitty rechargeable lights it's just a book light the other piece that is more traditional a lot of people already use needle minders but when you're traveling 
you really don't want to lose your needle. Not only is that, frankly, a hazard to your common man, now you've just got a needle loose in the world somewhere, um, but it's easier to throw, uh, throw around, not lose it while you're traveling. Maybe you're just traveling with one needle. I only ever took one needle with me. Um, so always make sure you have a needle minder. These are magnetic, they clip to your fabric and they pop your needle right on there so it's always in a safe place. I also take a pattern, a, a printed paper pattern and I mark it off with my handy dandy highlighter. So highlighter goes in the bag. This is something I do just all the time when I'm at home, even when I'm stitching, but for sure I wanna use it with a paper pattern when I'm on the road. Unconventional, here we go. Binder clip. I threw one of these in my bag on a whim and I cannot tell you how many times this came in handy for clipping my paper pattern to something in my near vicinity to be able to look at it. Most often it was the tray table and the various apparatus that's on the back of an airplane seat. I just put this right there with my air, with my pattern and was able to quickly follow along. It made it so much easier. Um, especially if you're gonna be doing long flights or you got a lot of time, having something that's easy that makes stitching a joy makes the time go by faster. So unconventional tip, get you a binder clip, throw it in there, you never know if you're gonna use it. Um, and then last but not least, as far as your supplies go, and whatever system of floss management and storage that you use at home, I highly, highly recommend using a floss away bag or some other bagging system when you're traveling. It is easy to keep all the floss clean. It's safe in its own little plasticky bag. You can, and you can use just like a, a Ziploc bag, anything super easy. Um, it's easy to quickly open and stuff something in there um, rather than making a mess or just having your floss that's kind of everywhere. It's easy to do when you're stitching at home and you've got space to um, spread out. But I highly recommend using some kind of floss bagging system when you're stitching on the road. So then that leads to tip number five, and that is prep your floss ahead of time. So you've already thought about your pattern, you've selected something that maybe has a, a small number of colors, has um, something that's very easy to manage on the road. You've already pulled out all of your bags to put it in. Um, I keep my bags on a ring. It's really easy to store, throw in and out of my flexible, durable, replaceable project bag. And then finally, creating, prepping my floss so that it's easy to access and use. And I'm mainly talking about space confinements. I'm gonna reenact this for you. Middle seat of the airplane. What's your, what's your arm? Like you can't be going like this, can't be going like this. Can't do what we would often do when we're stitching with a long thread is be able to pull it all the way up and cut it and do this and that. You cannot do that. I did all of that ahead of time. I would pre-cut my floss into lengths that were only about this long, this long. That's a really short length for me. Um, and then I wrapped it up really quick around my fingers as an individual piece and stuffed it inside my bag. So pulling it out of a bag right now, this is one of those little wrapped up pieces. Just wrapped one strand of floss, you can see just the one, one strand of floss around my fingers and then stuffed it inside the bag. And I did lots of those. So let's say I cut a brand new length of DMC floss that has six strands. So now I pulled apart one at a time, all six of them wrapped up all six into my tight little thread knot here, and then stuffed all six into my floss bag. It was so easy then to when I was on a plane in a confined space, take my pull out, my one little pre-wound piece of floss, thread my needle, and then I've got something I'm working with for my fabric that's about like that. Um, makes me a good neighbor on an airplane and much easier to work with. So take the time to prep your floss, pre-cut it, pre-wind it, keep it nice and small for those confined spaces. That might be less of a concern for you if you're gonna be on a train with a little more roominess, maybe you're in a car with a lot more roominess to it. Um, but for me in airplane travel, I definitely found that pre-cutting my floss into those small lengths really made a big difference. Um, so those are my tips. 
Those are my top five travel tips, and I hope, like me, you have a chance to go see a new corner of the world, maybe see new people or beloved people in other spaces, and you can take your stitching with you. You guys take care of yourself. I'll see you next time.